Hello, friends. Sleep Tight Stories, Sleep Tight Relax, and Sleep Tight Science are now available to play on Story Button, the device that makes it easy to listen to our shows and more without having to use a phone or tablet. This month, you can save $10 at storybutton.com when you use the code Sleep Tight. Story Button, the home of imagination. Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Libby arrives home soaked, and Margarita wants nothing to do with her. After she gets dried off, they sit together for a while before dinner. Margarita gets her normal dinner of pizza after Libby has finished eating, and after a while they head off to sleep. When Libby wakes up with the moon shining in her eyes, she realizes that Margarita is not in her room and goes to look for her. Margarita's Midnight Snack Adventure Libby walked in the front door of her house, every inch of her body soaking wet. Her feet even made a sloshing sound when she walked. She was used to the rain. It rained almost every day where she lived before, but this was unplanned, as was the wind. She let out a big sigh. The rain had stopped as soon as she turned around to close the door. She usually carried a small umbrella in her book bag, but it just didn't seem necessary anymore, until today. As usual, Margarita ran from her napping place to greet her at the door. Hi, Margarita. Don't you think I look silly? I'm soaked to the bone. Silly rain. It's like a rain cloud followed me home and decided to pounce just when I was out in the open, Libby said in a cranky tone. I'm like a human puddle, Libby tended to exaggerate a little. Margarita meowed and moved to butt her head against Libby's leg. As soon as she realized just how wet Libby was, she arched her back, jumped in the air, and ran off to hide under the covers of her sleeping blanket. Libby sighed again. Ugh, I don't blame you, Margarita. I would like to run away from me right now, too. I'll go and change my clothes, and then we can chat before Mom comes home and we have dinner. I think she made meatballs last night, but I know you won't eat that. Libby went to her room and changed into some warm and comfy sweats. Well, I guess I can't wear my favorite hoodie again tomorrow if it's soaking wet, she mumbled to herself. After hanging up her wet clothes and drying her hair in the bathroom, Libby walked out to the living room where Margarita was hiding under the blanket on the couch. It's okay, Margarita. You can come out now. I am all dry, Libby said as she sat cross-legged in front of the couch. Margarita stuck her head out and looked around to make sure there was nothing wet that would touch her. After she was sure the area was dry, she meowed and jumped down to get some cuddles and pets from Libby. I missed you today, Margarita. I wish you could come to school with me. That would be fun. I have some friends now, but they don't understand me as well as you do. Some of the boys are kind of mean, though, and they might tease you. So it's best if you stay home, I guess. One boy named Billy likes to stick out his tongue at the people he doesn't like. I stopped doing such silly things when I was a kid. Anyway, he stuck his tongue out at me today. It doesn't bother me, I guess. 
You would really love one of my friends. Her name is Susan, and her dad is a really good cook. You wouldn't believe what she brought for lunch today. Care to guess? Margarita, purring loudly from Libby petting her, replied with meh. No, it wasn't that, Libby replied. Margarita looked up at Libby and replied, meh, meh. No, silly, it wasn't that either. Her father made her some pizza pockets. Not that frozen stuff you like to eat as a snack sometimes. It was homemade. I had a bite, and it was super delicious. You would have loved it. It had tomato sauce and cheese and some kind of meat stuff inside. Margarita purred even louder. A lot of my friends have started wearing makeup sometimes, and they invited me over to their house to try some. I might go, but I don't like makeup, and I don't think Mom will let me wear it anyway. I guess I just like how I look right now, except when I am caught in a freak rainstorm or when I first wake up in the morning. I guess I should go start my homework before Mom gets home. She might need some help with dinner. Did you want to come into my bedroom and watch me study? I can tell you some jokes every once in a while. Spaghetti and meatballs were tasty tonight, Mom, Libby said as she got up from the table to put her plate into the dishwasher. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you for helping with the salad and for not wearing your headphones at the table, Libby's mom said as she noticed Margarita sitting patiently by her bowl. I'm sorry, Margarita, Libby's mother said. In the rush to get our dinner ready, I forgot all about feeding you. Silly me. Margarita meowed. Like every day, Libby's mom first tried to give the orange cat a drink of milk, but the cat wouldn't drink it. Then her mother brought her a delicious bowl of tuna. And again, the orange cat would not eat it. Then she brought over a can of roast chicken and gravy cat food. And Margarita just would not eat it. You are one unusual cat, Libby's mother said as she grabbed a slice of leftover pizza to heat in the microwave. Setting the slice on the floor, Libby's mom watched as Margarita ate the pizza, licked her mouth, and went to the couch, where she laid down to rest her tummy. She certainly loves pizza, Libby said as she grabbed an apple for dessert. She certainly does. I think we are the pizzeria's favorite customers because we buy so much pizza. The vet says she is healthy, but that's one strange diet, Libby's mother said. That night, when everyone was supposed to be fast asleep, Libby was woken up by the super bright moon that was shining down on her face. Libby had forgotten to close her drapes. Ugh, what is with the light? Libby said as she squinted open her eyes. When she slowly got out of bed to close her drapes, she noticed Margarita was not curled up in her usual spot at the foot of the bed. Margarita, Margarita, pss, 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 Libby whispered as she rubbed her eyes. Margarita always slept with her at night, and though Libby knew she probably went for a walk every once in a while, she was always there whenever she woke up. Where could Margarita be, Libby thought. Curious, Libby slowly tiptoed out of her room, the floor cool under her feet. The house was super quiet, with only the soft ticking of the clock in the hallway and the occasional snort from her mother's room. Libby's mother snored. As she was walking, she heard a scratching noise. She followed the noise to the kitchen and found Margarita trying to open the fridge door with her little paw. 
Margarita, are you serious? Are you looking for a midnight snack? Libby giggled quietly. Margarita turned to look at her, her green eyes glowing in the dim light, and replied with a meow. Libby laughed and opened the fridge, the lights spilling out and making Margarita squint. Okay, let's see what kind of snack we might have here for you, Libby said, scanning the shelves. I guess you don't want milk, tuna, or this cat food. How about I make you a tiny pizza? I think I have all the ingredients we might need. Maybe I could use a midnight snack too and we could share. Sharing snacks is fun, Libby said to the sounds of Margarita purring loudly. Shh, Libby said. If you purr too loudly, you might wake Mom up and she has to go to work in the morning. Margarita watched with interest as Libby gathered the ingredients, her tail twitching in excitement. Libby made the mini pizzas, put them on a plate, and then put them into the microwave. We don't have time for the oven to heat up, so we will have to use the microwave, Libby said. It's almost as good. After the microwave finished, they set up a mini picnic in the living room, spreading a blanket on the floor and sitting down with their snack. Libby broke off a piece of pizza for Margarita, who devoured it quickly. You sure are hungry, Libby said giving her another larger piece to eat. Are you delivering pizza to another place in the house again? Margarita ate that piece a bit more slowly. This is our secret midnight party, Margarita. Just you, me, and that way too bright moon, Libby whispered. You are my best friend. After they finished eating, Libby cleaned up their little picnic spot. Satisfied with her snack, Margarita began to purr loudly, curling up on the blanket. Libby smiled watching her. Maybe we should do this more often, Margarita. Just us, the stars, and a midnight snack. But maybe not on a school night, because I need my sleep, she said softly, laying down beside Margarita and looking up at the ceiling as if she could see the night sky. Margarita cuddled up close to Libby and continued to purr. Her eyes closed. The room was warm and cozy, filled with the gentle sounds of Margarita's purring. Libby felt her eyelids growing heavy, the excitement of their adventure giving way to the peacefulness of the night. Best midnight snack ever, she mumbled, drifting off to sleep with Margarita by her side. They woke up the next morning, still in the living room, the first rays of sunlight peeking through the curtains. Libby's mother found them there, wrapped in a blanket, a look of surprise and then amusement crossing her face. Looks like you two had quite the night she said, smiling. Libby stretched and yawned, looking at Margarita, who was still snoozing peacefully. We did, she replied, her voice soft with sleep and happiness. Margarita and I had our own little adventure, I guess. Libby's mom gave her a hug. I'm happy that this silly cat found you that day. Me too, mom. I have friends, but she is my best friend by far, Libby said as she went to the bathroom to get ready for her day. As she started her day, Libby knew that there would be more midnight snacks in the future. For now, though, she was just happy to have Margarita, her midnight snack buddy, her best friend. And that is the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight.